So today I'm going to show you guys how to make a harness. I hope that this one turns out a lot better than my first one where I filmed myself and you really couldn't tell what I was doing and it is just ridiculous. Now I didn't realize when I first made this video but I later watched and noticed that I didn't tell what material I made these harnesses out of. This is nylon, pure nylon string. Reason I use that, nylon strong. It doesn't rot when it gets wet and you can melt the ends off, but it's also smooth and flexible so it doesn't wear on your mink like some cheap plastic rope would. So pure nylon, I buy it from Home Depot. These are like 50, maybe 75 feet in a roll and we're looking at less than $5 in cost when I bought it. So less than $5 for over 50 feet of rope, that's really good, uh, especially when you consider that the harness takes less probably about a foot or less of, of string so we're talking pennies uh, per harness so really good deal two different string thicknesses um, this one is uh, it's three cent three millimeters excuse me or in other words for for you Americans like me it's uh, one eighth of an inch thickness I find that that's perfect for a female mink or a, a smaller male. Um, it, it, it's light, it gives, it's strong, everything. It's just perfect for them. However, I found when I got my first Minkasaurus Rex, uh, Monstru Shage, the monster mink, I found that this little uh, quarter inch, or excuse me, eighth inch rope, or three, three millimeters, just was a little bit tight on him, just a little bit too thin. and it, the pressure when he pulled was so much greater because he's so strong and so big and heavy. I just wasn't comfortable with this little light, light thing. He's not going to break it, but obviously having a thin string, it puts more pressure in a, in a smaller area. So I wanted to uh, make him a new harness where this pressure is a little spread out. So we doubled it to a quarter inch rope. So a quarter inch being six millimeters if you uh, have the metric system. So six millimeters or a quarter inch, I find that this is a lot more uh, forgiving for his big body weight. And so the beauty with this style of harness that I make, you can make it for any animal you want. You can make, you know, you get a giant river otter from Central or from South America, you could use a one inch rope for a big old thick animal. If you're gonna make one for a, a pygmy shrew, you just get a little teeny string. So you just make it according to the body weight and size of the animal. If it's too big, the knots when you're done tying this are just too bulky and ugly and it just isn't as nice. So you want to have the appropriate size string for the appropriate animal. So anyway, enough of that. Uh, another thing you want, you'll need, I like to use a candle because it just burns and I don't have to keep using a lighter or matches or whatever. Matches are ridiculous, you'll have to use a lighter. But you want to melt off the ends of the string when you're done cutting them and sizing them because otherwise they'll fray and they get ugly and fall apart. So first off, how do we make this harness? Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, make a loop. So um, I'm gonna show you how to make that loop. So it's really simple, you take it and you bend the string in half. So you've got a little simple little loop there, right? Okay. Then you're going to take it and you're going to tie the string over itself to make this little loop like here just by itself with a little knot. So all you do is you tie it over itself. So you, you tie it or wrap it around and pull it through. Now I know that was pretty simple but I'm going to show you guys again with a bigger rope and I'm going to make a big noose just so you guys can see how it's done. Um, Okay, so basically, look, you've got a, a noose, you're going to just <clears throat> double it over your rope, you take it, you wrap it around itself, and you pull it through. So the rope stayed together the entire time, boom, and you've got a noose, right? Now back to what we're doing. So <clears throat> I've tied a noose in the string that we're actually going to use. Notice that noose is, is pretty big and you've got this tail. You don't want either one of these things. So you, to get rid of the tail, you feed it back in so that you've got a short little tail there. 
and uh, you pull, okay, so you feed it in, you wrap it all around, and you pull it so that what used to be on the tail is now in the loop. You see the loop's bigger now. Now we don't want a big big loop like this. Uh, we want a little teeny loop, just small enough for the string to pass through smoothly. If it's too tight, it'll pass through slowly. and You don't want that. If it's too big, you just don't want it too big. So now all you do is you want the excess string, you want it to go into this end or else you'll end up with a long tail again, right? So you just follow the string around and figure out, okay, well where, which end of the loop do I need to pull on to tighten it? Okay, so it's this one I found. So I'm just going to pull this. Sorry, guys. Okay, there we go. So I'm pulling it, and you see the loop's getting smaller. And I want the loop to be just big enough for that string to pass through smoothly. Remember it's going to get bigger because as you pull the slack out, this loop's going to get bigger. So at first I'm going to make this a little bit smaller than I want because I know it will stretch. So then I just put all the slack and I pull this and I pull the slack out. See now how the slack went into the main string and I still have this little tiny tail. And then I pull it tight, pull everything tight. And you see now the loop's bigger because I pulled it tight, right? And that's just about right. So then you've got your first loop. Then all you need to do is you feed the end of the string. See, I've got the whole string here. I don't know if you could see all that. Can you see that okay? Okay. So you just put that back through it. So you've just made a little, a little lasso like uh, the cowboys use. And now we're going to go catch a little tiny horse. <laughs> but anyway... Um, so you got a little lasso going here, and, <laughs> and this is uh, we're, what we want to do now. We've got one. We want two of these. So we take that, and we just kind of tighten it down. And all we do is the exact same thing that we did before. We've got this other little loop just hanging down, and we double up the main string. So the exact same thing we did before, except this time we want the loop to be a little bit big because we're going to need to pass the other knot through it. So we want it a little bit big at first. And there we go, we got our we got our knot. So we got the same exact loop that we tied before. Okay. And then we're gonna take the entire little lasso that we just created, right? We're gonna tighten it down and we're gonna pass it back through this loop. And then this loop is way too big, so we need to tighten it down to where exactly like it was, like this other one is, right? Where it's tight and small. So we same way we did before. You just figure out, okay, this is where we want the slack to go to, to the long end. Okay, which part of the loop is going to have this, is going to feed this slack to? So we follow this string up through, we follow it around. And it looks like it's this side of the loop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it down. And you see it's tightening up the loop, tightening up the loop, tightening up the loop till it's tight. And you want it too tight at first, right? Because you're going to pull the slack out later. And I wrap it around and I pull this long end and it takes all the slack out. Pull it tight. Then we're going to pull it tight again. And there we go. So we've just created two loops. Now, this is way too small for a mink. And maybe if you had a three week old mink, you could squeeze it in there, but that's about it. And you, why would you put a harness on a three week old mink? Right? That's, like a, that's like a weasel harness right there, if you got a weasel. So now we need to make it so that it would fit the mink. Mouse harness. Little mouse harness we got going. <laughs> so since we need to make it bigger, we just take the lot, the extra string we got hanging in, and we feed it out to the rest of the harness. So same thing we did before. Just feed it out. 
we're going to skip ahead and I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so we've got the this harness sized now to the point where we think it's going to fit on our mink. We're going to be putting this on Jake's mink, Loki. And, um, and I'll, I'll describe kind of how it works uh, when we have a mink to show it on. In the video I made, I tried to describe it and it really didn't make any sense. But if you notice, I still have this big long tail and... Um, initially, I was tempted to use this as a leash. It sucks. It's a bad idea. Don't do it. So you want to cut this off and make a separate leash. So because we've sized this to the point where we think it fits, we don't know. I always leave a little tail just in case. That way you can make it bigger and you don't have to throw the whole thing you just made away. Um, and then after you've sized it and you put it on the mink and you know it fits just right, then I cut the rest of the tail off. So I'm going to leave a little bit just to make sure this fits the mink that we made it for. So I cut it with the scissors and then you take the, the candle and you melt the end just a little bit and get it so that it will uh, nice and clean and it's not going to fray at all. And there you have it. You have the little harness. And then after we've put it on the mink and we've either tightened or loosened it, then we'll cut whatever tail's left. So I'm going to show this uh, when we get a mink to put it on. We'll show you some more. First, I'm going to show you how to put a harness on a mink that you can handle barehanded uh, using food reward to keep them distracted so you can put the harness on. Oh, yeah. Go big boy. There we go, buddy. Don't bite me. Here. Is that gonna be too tight? Here we go, one leg. Here, here, buddy. Right here, right here. Oh, you're okay. Hey, you're okay. No, no, no. You can't get down. You gotta stay here and eat it. Oh, good boy. Thank you for licking me. Let's get you off of Joseph's hand. Oh, wow. That's way too loose. Okay, we gotta take this off and redo it. Okay, so no more food. Got our food? Uh, we gotta get this off, it's way too loose. Bingo! Ho. Okay, feed them. Remember last time you put it right over the meat? It was perfect, yeah, right. you went right through it. No, wait, no, no. Here, I'm to grab that. There, no, that's okay. Just hold it for me. She's eating the string. <laughs> okay, there we go. Keep eating. Oh, you're okay. Hey, buddy. No, don't take it from me. There you go. There we go. You're okay. Hey, you're okay. We'll just have to do. You're okay. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. That's super loose. Let's see if I can. Well, maybe Loki wears it super loose. Yeah. Maybe he'll be does. okay. And that's how you put a harness on. Now I'm going to show you how to put a harness on a mink that can't be handled barehanded. One you have to put gloves on. With gloves, it's really hard to, you know, manipulate and, and put the harness on them. Plus, if you're wearing gloves, they're probably wild and and easily uh, just stressed out and things like that. So I have a little device that I've made. Uh, just specifically for putting a harness on a wild mink. Same device can also be used for tame mink. However, uh, it's not necessary when you can handle them barehanded to use this device. So either one, it's a great device. So here's here's how I put a harness on a, a mink that can't be handled barehanded. This is my harness putter honor. I don't have a good name for it yet. What it is is it's you can see I've kind of coiled the the wire. In one end, it's wider, so it's easier for them to go in, and then it gets narrower at the other end. And I've got these barbs left. And what I do is, I fit the harness over the little barbs. All right, 
and you've got it like this and you've got the knot on the top so where, however you're going to lay it, if you're going to lay it like this, you want to move the top knots to the top of it. And then you run the mink through this, and this comes off on their body. Now, if you're lucky, you could do this deal here, where you loop, one of them is hanging, right? But sometimes they learn not to go through the hanging loop and they'll push it out of the way, so it just depends on your mink. Now, this should be just tight enough for them to squeeze through. If they go through it very easy on this end at all, it's too big. The harness is just going to come off. If they can barely squeeze through, it's perfect. As long as you can get them through it. If they won't go through it, you just got to do what you can to encourage them through it. So I'm going to show you putting it on a mink I've never used this device on. And a mink that's really, really hard for me to handle. It's Loki. She's Jake's mink. She hates me and attacks me. So I've, that's why I have the coat on. It's actually a really warm day. It's to protect myself. It's not... To keep me warm so you see this device it's made so you could change the size this is too small for Loki this is made for kids mink uh, Ruby Ruby's a lot thinner than Loki so we're gonna make it a little bigger and then we're gonna see what uh, let's see this harness is already sized to Loki so it should fit on her just right So we're going to put the back end on first, and uh, we're going to see if we can get Loki to run through and uh, have this fit on just right. If not, then I'll show you what to do if it doesn't go on over their head and their legs. Okay, so we'll see if we can do this without getting savaged by the beast. Um, this is, I put take the meat and I put it on a wire. That way I can I can hold it with my gloves and I can tease her into the little tube. So you've got the tube laid out here. Now what I want to do is get her to go inside the tube for the meat. Loki. The problem is we're doing this in a big pen. You shouldn't be doing it in a big pen, but we couldn't see it through the cage. So Loki up. See how I got her to go in for the meat? Now I'm just gonna get her to come the rest of the way through for the meat. See how she went through and ate the meat? So that was her reward. She's had a good experience. She should be willing to do it again. So you could do that a couple different times or once, whatever. It depends on how comfortable the mink feels. See, she feels comfortable. She's squeezing through again. She wants more meat. So we won't do more than one. So you put the harness on like this. You want the neck piece hanging out so it's real easy for them to get caught in the neck piece. But this, the leg part, you want it out farther. Actually, I've got this a little too far here. You want this in farther, so it kind of sticks. So you want them to, actually that was just right. We'll find out in a minute if she gets caught in it right. So the idea is that she goes through the tunnel, right? And then her head will go through this and get caught around her neck and as she pulls, she will get tighter and tighter and this will come off and the hope is that it comes off behind her front legs. Ready? Yeah, I'm already started. Okay. Okay, you see how it slipped over the first part? Now we gotta get it over the other part. Now this isn't the ideal way to do it, but it works. We just slip it over there. Then you get a hook. See, I got a little hook going on. I hook it right here, and I should really have gloves still on, but I'm not going to put them on because I'm lazy. See, I got it over one leg. Now look, you see I'm going to flip it to the other yeah, side. Let me go around before you do it. Flip it to the other side, she walks through it. See? Now she just stepped through. You could do this without tailing them, but I just tailed it because we don't have time to mess around it. And, um... But normally you would just bait them through. You wouldn't tail them through like I just did. Um, but you get it on that way and then you get a leash. We get a leash. And you don't have to do this tailing them like I said. The tailing them kind of stresses them a little bit. But uh, you take the leash and you hook it through. Can you see that hook? Then you bend this hook down because you don't want the hook poking out. And this wire is a really bad wire. I've got probably the worst wire I could do with this. But you want to hook it. 
You want to curve it like this. Did you see how the hook's down and the curve's up? You don't do a goofy screwy wire like this, but you get a straight one. Does that make sense? Can you see that? How the hook is down. Okay. So then you just hook it through the middle. So you hook it through the middle of the, of the carrier or the, the harness. You pull it through without losing a finger is the preference. Fortunately, I had a cuff. Or she'd be, I'd be bleeding a lot right now. Okay, and then all you do is you see you got the little noose. You just run one end of the harness or the leash, excuse me, through the little noose. How you change my teeth? Because I'm disgusting like that. And there you go. You got a leash on a mink, and you didn't have to hold her still. Now, normally, like I said, you wouldn't have to tail them like that because you'd have a little, you'd have them in a little area where they couldn't run away, but we couldn't really do that with her because we've got her in this big area and we couldn't do it in the cage because you wouldn't be able to see it. So that's not exactly how you do it. You do it minus the tailing, but as you notice, it's a lot easier than like holding them still and shoving it on them and it doesn't make them near as mad. So there you go.